Look at these smiling faces <laughs> around us tonight. Happy, happy. Look at all the models on the table. Very hey, Lonnie. Impressive. How are you doing, Ken? Jeff? Hey, Ken. We're going to have some fun tonight, right? Yes, we are. And we are, we are going to talk about the RPM meet. That's why we're here. That is one of my most favorite detail-oriented, yes, motivating shows. Motivates you. Ready? We have uh, Richard running camera tonight. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. It's awesome to have you tonight. Give us a countdown and let's uh, let's have some fun tonight. All right. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> and by GL Robotics. With over 61 colors of 3D printed filaments in stock, your gateway to new technology. Check out their website at glroboticsusa.com. Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. And by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week in Model Railroading, show number 235. For May 20th, 2023, I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. We all love Joe Fugate and the hard work that they all do to create this monthly digital publication, which is part of what the What's Neat family of videos that we create are for, whereas that video, we get our hands dirty, we build stuff, and it's a lot of fun, and we're starting a new four-part series here in June with another great small layout that's perfect for the man cave. We've just finished the last four part series on building a narrow gauge layout that represented parts of the Rio Grande Southern, whereas we took a shelf layout and made it so that it could work its way into a more permanent layout, but still attainable for any model railroader, where it's not too obtuse like what I have going around us tonight in the studio. It's a nice, simple layout that's functional, and that's the beauty of this hobby. Tonight we've got a lot of amazing people with us on the set. I'm gonna start over here where Mike always sits. I have our favorite electrician, Steve Mantia. Hey, Steve. Hello. It's good to have you tonight. I'm glad to be here. Sitting right next to me, I've got one of my favorite accountants, Lonnie Bathurst. Hello, Lonnie. Good to be here. Good, good to, be to here. have you. Thank you. And your co-partner, in the RPM meet, you guys work hard together to present that show in St. Louis, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, is Jeff Kubler. Hello, Great Jeff. Here. Great to be here, Ken. It's good to have you on the set as well. I want to start out tonight talking about a photo shoot that I had the honor to do this week. And thank you, Lord, for giving us some sunshine. Um, I've got this beautiful K2 locomotive. This is from Broadway Limited Imports down in Florida. And this is a Chesapeake and Ohio locomotive. And I shot some beautiful photography as I, I want to expose this on the What's Neat show for them. But I think it's worth mentioning on the podcast because this is something they call hybrid brass. And I call it plastic brass, but it's not. It's a die cast boiler. Um, all the attachments, the handrails, the whistles, the bells, the marker lights, the operating lights, all of the details are brass fittings onto a die cast uh, 
spoiler. And I mean, it's absolutely exquisite. This locomotive is delivered as the model is for the 1940s. Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad discovered right away that they needed to go from the 12,000 gallon tenders up to the 16,000 gallon tenders for the extra reach that it gave them. And Broadway Limited is offering this beautiful K2 locomotive with both types of tenders. So amazing. This also comes with their amazing sound system. Um, I believe they call it, they started with Paragon 1 years mm -hmm. ago. That was great, I thought. Right? And I think now they're up to number 4, Paragon 4, sound control system with all the bells and whistles and lighting functions. Um, just thank you guys for sharing this model and allowing me to shoot it in my studio. It was a total joy, right? I don't know. I, I think he wants it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was eyeballing it earlier. Yes, it all right, so Lonnie and Jeff, gentlemen, we're all going to chime in here and talk about one of our most favorite shows. Um, we have been covering the RPM show since 2012, I believe, through mm -hmm. the years and have watched it grown, promoting it through Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, so much so that folks that have watched our videos, we've had folks from New Zealand and Chile and Australia and all parts of the world that have come down here and given us their testimonials because as you recall, we do show, shoot a show down here that Saturday night featuring a lot of the manufacturers and modelers that attend that show. And so just the fact that there's so much love in this room during that week and another 50 people out back, I mean, it is, it's all kumbaya. And that's the beauty of the RPM meet. It brings together like-minded modelers, and we find out that we're all friends. That was great. Thank you. Good segue. <laughs> Shall we start? It's all yours, gentlemen. Okay. I'll start. Okay. Go ahead, Lon. Um, I think a lot of viewers go to RPMs around the country. There are probably 15 to 20 different RPMs held from coast to coast every year. The uh, history of the RPM, I remember going to what was termed an RPM in Columbus, Ohio in the 90s. It was attached to an NMRA and there was uh, hundreds of diesel locomotives. And when you read back, if you go to the website for the National RPM, it gives you the history, the people who wrote it, chronological events that took place from the 80s on. And it was started to uh, bring diesels and, and detailing diesels into mainstream thinking for modelers because up until that point, you would think it was a steam world or a transition era. So when you went to the earliest of the RPMs, you saw all of this great diesel stuff. Right. Um, and from that, a lot of companies that you know them well made parts. And that's how we got parts back then. Uh, fast forward, Naperville, I think, is probably the granddaddy of all that have survived and succeeded at a, a grandiose level. I've gone several times to the Chicagoland uh, meet. It's a wonderful Meet's been on for maybe 25 years. Oh, I was going to say almost 30 because yeah. I do remember that's where I believe, as I recall, I might have met the Kosick brothers. Okay. And that Modutrek layout that they have up there in the Chicago area land, which mm -hmm. was the motivating factor to build the Midwest Valley modelers layout. So mm -hmm. much so that I think I almost copied their layout dead on because it was that good. If it's yeah. not broke, don't change it. But we eventually did change it and included a very large city and farmland. And oh my God, what a learning experience. Yeah. But that is what the tie, and you guys have modular layouts at the RPM meet. That's true. That's so. true. We'll be talking about that as well. So this thing, fast forward to today, uh, John Golden started the St. Louis RPM meet. He and some others in the area. That would have been, I'm saying, I think Chris maybe 18 was Kohlberg years ago. involved in that? Yes, Dan Kohlberg. Was Dave Davis involved in that? In the very awesome. beginning. Isn't mm -hmm. that awesome? Yeah. And, and, uh, Dan Kohlberg stayed until probably three years ago, I think so. something like that. And John's been active up until just recently. John took a uh, hiatus, I'll call it, went to Germany for five or six years. Wow. From there, he uh, organized and continued to run the RPM meets in the St. Louis, and then others got involved along the way. I think I've been there for, if this is the 16th coming up, I've been there since the first one. Mm -hmm. But as far as being a principal in it, Probably all but the first two or three. Um, so today when you go to an RPM, they, they come in all shapes and sizes. I think we see people in the 60, 80, maybe 100 participant range focusing mostly on the models. Other events focus primarily on clinics 
and learning. Uh, ours, we tend to, we, we say it's about the models. We have four or 5,000 of them. Yes. Um, but we also have a, a great, vast array of vendors, manufacturers, exhibitors of all kinds, and uh, clinics. We don't focus on the clinics as much as they do at Cocoa Beach or Naperville, but we run 21 clinics of different topics. And that's probably two-thirds or more of the topics that all of them run. They might run 25 or more clinics, but they do them twice. We just do it once. But so the, uh, you can read more about the history through the national site, or you can go to our website and we tell you about our history. Want to talk about the website? Sure. Um, we, we put a, together a new website about two years ago, and uh, my son's actually the webmaster. And um, we looked around and basically we had all of the photos of the previous years. And we looked at this and said, you know, what is it we do? So let's create a tab for everything that we do, the clinics, uh, the models. And it's very important to show, we get a, a photographer every year to show all the models that show up. We try to get a picture of every one. I, I don't know if we've ever done it or not, but we cover a lot of them. Um, and then same thing, we have a, a website for the, or a tab for the schedules on the website, and that goes through each day of our two-day event, tells you what's going on at every hour. Um, and then there's also a running list of what vendors are going to be there, right? Uh, usually we have about 65 vendors, and that includes about 20 historical societies from yes. across the country. And, you know, th this is the... The synergy that happens there is you get people that are buying the models, seeing the models, learning about the models. It's all about the models, really. Mm -hmm. and, and we have everything that you need there to learn how to model. Um, mm -hmm. Lonnie's put together uh, a wonderful bit of um, learning stations that he's mm -hmm. procured over the years, and he's promoted that. And we have um, how many this year, Lonnie? We have five. We have the... Uh we have banners, large banners that we had made so that if you're walking around this 35,000 square foot area, you can look for a banner and say something's going on over there. It's not a Kmart blue light special, but it's attracting people <laughs> to learn whatever's going on. So this year we have almost a half a dozen already. We'll probably get another one. We try to make them places where you learn something that you're probably not going to get in a clinic. So it might be someone talking about laying track. Someone else might be talking about spray painting. Uh, we have a lady this year who's coming who does backdrops. She's known in the St. Louis area. She's met you before. Yes. Joanne Cargus. Cargus. And, Wonderful uh, individual. Yes, what a great spirit. I did have the opportunity to meet her. She speaks very highly of you. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. So, That's good. This is good. <laughs> she, uh, she is, a, I think, a commercial illustrator, and she's an artist. Her husband, I believe, is a maybe a mechanical engineer. I'm not sure what he does, but he, I know he does CAD CAM kind of work and um, is a modeler. Wow. He likes trains. So what a great couple. So she's going to be there with a learning station and uh, showing what she can do in case you want a, a backdrop in your model railroad. She's done some fabulous backdrops for railroaders in our area. So she's one of them. I've seen her work on some of the homes she's done, home layouts. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're anxious to have her this year. And then, uh, as I said, spray, spray painting, track laying, uh, she'll be there. Uh, George is going to be there with Sounds Track, and he's got Blue Nami Everybody to talk about. Everybody loves George. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Blue Nami's amazing. Others. And we have some new um, companies coming in, vendors this year. Um, Mini Prince is coming. Okay. And mm -hmm. they're bringing their ability to scan you and scale you down. That is right. Into the scale you want. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's digitally printed. So this is going to be a fabulous thing. Uh, we've seen it at a couple other national shows. I personally can't wait to see it. We're going to get a little Lonnie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll so see. An HO scale Lonnie. I'm sending right. one to my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> so they're coming. Uh, another new company is Graham Scale Models. Uh, the Steel Mill Modeler Supply is coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Mid-10 Custom Painting. So there's um, a couple other really new and different vendors that sign up every year and this year I think we have um, you know we have all the um, the regulars are showing up 
Uh, Fernero and Camerlango. Um, Yarmouth. Yarmouth model works. Mm -hmm. um, some others in the some resin, the resin business. The resin business, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's and that's huge. People have asked about those people. That's, that's we'll probably what I get see all the Lundy Studios here. They were, I think, they were here last year, showing mm -hmm. off some of their end scale buildings, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Steve Day, mm -hmm. hey Steve, you're coming, right? I know yeah. you are. <laughs> I know, right? Wasn't it last year that we showed all of us up at Vic Smith's layout? Because a lot of people mm -hmm. tend to oh, go to yeah. Vic's house the first night of the show and let's by the way the 28th and 29th of july are the show dates of the rpm meet in collinsville illinois at the gateway center and usually on friday nights a lot of the friends that we have end up at vic smith's house um and just enjoy the city's edge that beautiful city yeah. layout and last year uh, holly and i attended that greet and meet up at Vic's house, and that's when we met Steve Day from Lundy Modelers, and that's where mm -hmm. I think he taught her how to dance the Latino something or another. Oh, wow. I'm not showing <laughs> footage. I showed it last year on the show. Just go back and watch. It was cute. Um, but the fact is, and then I think it is on Saturday nights, the show, that's when we shoot a podcast down here, mm -hmm. and it's not unusual to have um, 60 or 80 people in the backyard, and um, I made sure my insurance covers that. So um, it's just a good time all the way around of kin spirits, you know. Yeah, you know it is a kumbaya moment. You're right. It, it is. is. The There's nose. a lot of people all over the basement, all, all little conversations. All, mm -hmm. you, know, you go from one place to another. People are talking about different things. And it, yes, you just Last year we had a gentleman that. from Chile, Chile. Mm -hmm. And he was at the microphone here. And um, his delivery was so sincere. I mean, just what the feelings are that he attained by coming and meeting us and seeing the great models at the show. Um, it was very heartfelt by a lot of these different people. Steve Hurt is another one that mm -hmm. comes every year and presents a G-scale, large-scale model. And his son and his father and the whole family, they're all involved in the hobby. And we exposed that mm -hmm. at the microphone last year on the show. That was a really good show, folks. You need to go back and watch that. Last year's RPM meet, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that was good. Steve is a great guy. Oh my gosh, he is. Yes. Steve Hurt gave us uh, that vehicle up here, <laughs> the What's <laughs> Neat vehicle. Yeah, I mean, it's like a better than a trophy, <laughs> right? I mean, the models, the barge models, it's not just trains. A lot of guys show up with Mississippi River models. And then mm -hmm. I believe we also have the auto enthusiasts yes, that attend us. that show. Mm -hmm. and the one gentleman sets up his four or eight or six modules that he's got set up as his home all the time where he collects cranes, some of the most mm -hmm. magnificent cranes. And some of these models, I imagine, are brass, and some oh, yeah. are hand-built oh, yeah. plastic Kibri models kit bashed. But the fact is, what an expose of the industry that people don't get to see as much and that is the construction industry that these guys share. I think last year they introduced a paving machine for the first time for the consumer to purchase. Mm. So just the variety of talent, the personalities, the, the clinics, the relaxed atmosphere where you guys let the modelers attend of an evening where all the exhibitors are closed but it, the models are there to be talked about and the modelers sit there and answer questions. You guys have really thought this out. We've tried to improve a little bit every year. I mean, we get mm -hmm. we get a um, we have a, a QR code that you can go up to your phone and press, and you can actually type in um, what you think about the RPM, mm -hmm. and we get a lot of positive comments from that. And every once in a while, we get a good suggestion that we'll toss around between mm -hmm. the six principles, and we'll see what we can do with it. Right? It's it's all about just making it a little better every year. Um, we don't, you know, we're not in this for the money. Um, Lonnie and I You're not gonna don't, make a, don't no. make a, we don't make a penny. You're not going to get rich honestly. on this show. None of us do. Um, we take everything, it costs about $20,000 to put this show on, but whatever is left over after we pay the bills goes into next year's show and making those little improvements mm -hmm. that we do every year to listen to the crowd, listen to the people, and make it just a little bit better. And that's how it's grown from probably the 300 when I first started going about uh, 12 years ago to we had 750 the one year, almost 800, I mm -hmm. think. So um, we we're really thinking that, you know, we just need to keep listening and keep improving. And that's yeah. what we do yeah. every year. 
We had an idea that came from uh, Tim Vez Mersbergen okay. uh, up in northern Illinois, Chicago area. And he said, uh, in the early days, when there weren't as many people, people hung around the models more and talked more about the models. Mm -hmm. And people wanting to learn got to hear from the people that built the model what they did, right. where they get the parts, how they do that, on and on. And uh, I said, well, if we need to bring that back, if people are out doing too many other things, because we have a lot of different things to do, we'll just provide more chairs. So now this year we're going to have more chairs in the modeling area, so those who built the models can sit there and relax, and others can come up and sit down with them and talk. So, like you say, it's, you want it to make it as open, as warm, as friendly, as learning as possible. Yes. So. All right, he had a, he, uh, Jeff hit on something a minute ago that um, I just show at the RPM meet. I'm like be bopping along. I get my interviews done. I meet all my friend friends. I get ready for the podcast. Um, I'm just be bopping along and enjoying the wave. You just said twenty thousand dollars to put on the show. I'm sorry, <laughs> the wave, the wave part. I just hit the beach. <laughs> yeah, that okay, did, yeah, that that yeah, rough bump yeah, that I heard that you gentlemen have got the fortitude, the economic wherewith. Well, you are an accountant economic wherewithal to be able to even 20 grand for the rest of us to have a good time uh thanks guys yeah <laughs> well it, like yeah. i said it, it all just feeds upon the previous year right right that's why we that's why we concentrate it um on it so hard all year long to build a better show mm -hmm. is because if we don't we're going to take a hit and it may go away and we don't want that we yeah. we enjoy this just as much as everybody else I learn so much from all the clinics and all the people that I've talked to, and I have friends that come from all across the country. Um, to me, it, it's the best weekend of the year in a lot of ways. <laughs> I love right? this. I love I you. mean, because That's I get awesome. to see people that I only see maybe once a year. It's the best right. time yeah. of the year. Yeah. <laughs> the train family is yeah. very important. It, yeah. is. it just, it just, yeah. the I love your atmosphere, enthusiasm. whether the little show I have or with that, it's just, you're doing it just for the sake of wanting to do it and something to look forward to and, and enjoy yourself with it in that. Yeah, whether, yeah, it's, the, the number is a and nice. And you've been doing train shows for two and a half years now. Yes, and it's, you just, the fact there, you just want your vendors, you want everybody to just have a good time. And each time you can learn, um, there's, ne there's nothing wrong with um, not know, you know, knowing that you don't know everything and a little piece here or there that you pick up that, okay, the next time we'll try this, we'll try that and, and see how it goes in that. Just so, like you said, people enjoy themselves and put it on that calendar to go to that show each year. And, and that it's aspect. not just about the models, it's about the fellowship of the yes. friends that you have met or that you do meet. If you go through any of the What's Neat videos that we've covered that show on, that week we always create a video for that show. And the personalities that we have had on that show, sharing their graffiti weather, the graffiti artists, they're really, they're there in droves. Um, it's just amazing people that we meet at the RPM meet. The same could be said for an NMRE National, mm -hmm. but with regards to the RPM, it's more of a show of people with very like talents and their desires to see, you know what I mean? It's like, right. it's a category that the modelers that go there seriously enjoy it. They do, mm -hmm. and they, they look at, uh, a lot of the model photos are on the website, and a lot of people that we get come to the show they tell me I just had to see this for myself because of the pictures on the the website itself it it really is um, more of a in-depth look at anything that you want to do in scale modeling the people are there in that room that know how to do it so it's just a matter of finding them and yes. talking to them um, you know it does um, you know we, we we do cost a little bit of money. Um, admission is $35 for Friday and Saturday to get in, and it's $25 for Saturday only. And kids under 13 are free with the paid adult admission. And, you know, we, we get people that ask, isn't that a lot of money for a show? And it's yeah. it's really... This isn't a train show. This isn't a train yeah. show. We, we, we've talked about that, you know. But at the same time, when you break that down per hour, the mm -hmm. amount of entertainment, learning, and social events that you get through this, um, it's a cheap date. Yes. 
the um, with a really pretty date too by the way let's <laughs> just make sure this is right because this is a great show it is well groomed yeah right the um, one of the things when when I started working with John Golden on this more than a decade ago um, he kind of gave me a free reign to to do things that we hadn't done the year before, try something new the next year. And one of the things I said to he and Dan was that uh, everybody has a dollar vote. You can cast your dollar vote in our society and go do what you want to do with that dollar. And so if we want them to exercise that dollar vote and come to us, it has to be the whole package. They have to have a hotel, housing that they like. They have mm -hmm. to have restaurants that they want to go and have fun with their friends. It has to be an environment that's conducive to walking up with a complete stranger and asking a question and starting a conversation. Right. Some want manufacturers there, so we try to get all of the manufacturers, whether they're a Ma and Paul in their basement making a little doodad with a 3D printer, or the biggest names that we all know in the hobby. Yes. Uh, we want models, so we try to get four and 5,000 models there because some want that the clinics, uh, and then this is a social hour. We have the barbecue on Thursday night for those who come in on Thursday to be there first thing Friday. We have layout tours and, and social events. On Friday, we have the RPM Roundup over at the Doubletree, which we call our host hotel, and that's where a lot of the manufacturers and exhibitors stay, as well as modelers. So you can go into the lounge there after the event on Friday night, and voila, you see 50 or 80 or 100 people just like you in there that want to talk some more. Right. And so to me, that whole event of being fun makes someone decide, I'm going to go to St. Louis, to Collinsville, to that RPM, instead of something else. That's, that's the secret, that's the sauce that puts it all together, I think. Does Spring Creek go to that show? I don't remember. I know oh, yeah. they go to mm -hmm. the yeah. Spring Creek, Dave and Dub Zucker, mm -hmm. they attend that show. Mm -hmm. um, great people. Aren't they nice? They are. They're I bet they're one, one of the most professional vendors that you guys have to deal with. Too. Yeah, and we try to be. In fact, it's uh, it's become my job to pick the exhibitors, and we turn down people every year because we don't want it to be a hobby shop event. So the hobby shops we have, like the Zuckers, are one of the few that we have prototype uh, models that yeah. they sell. Mm -hmm. They they bring great stuff and people want to buy from them. So if you had the big Lionel dealership gentleman that would come in that buys collections, is that the kind of person that you... No. So uh, you can't set yeah, up at yeah. this... I know yeah. that's... The, uh, I know my place. Then. We, but you have a yeah, lot of very one. nice HO scale <laughs> models. <laughs> yes. Now that's acceptable, right? <laughs> that would be You acceptable. said collection, exactly. and you were talking about I mean, Lionel's earlier. got their own show. The tin plate, yeah. or they have the biggest mm -hmm. shows in the world. They what do. are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah. You mentioned earlier about the... Uh, uh, buying out collections and things like yes. that. We started last year with a lot of pressure from two or three people that are our friends in this hobby that had bought collections and they wanted to to come to the, our event and have, have a sale to this collection. And so we tried it last year, I think was our first year, and it was an outstanding success. People said they brought stuff that I haven't been able to find. And we're talking about modelers that want uh, resin kits that have been out of production for years or, yes. or something yes. else that's yes. not been around. So we're trying to have a limit of two, three or so estate people each year. So they've you got could to come, come with, after all. Yeah, they've got so to come see with, that? Yeah. <laughs> they've got to come with stuff in a box, <laughs> oh my God. new, in good shape. We don't want trays of Tyco stuff with yeah. all due respect that's to funny. the people that made their fortune on that. This is good quality, high-end stuff that's been out of circulation and Someone goes to that hobby shop in the sky, leaves their stuff behind, I call and it someone's that selling it. <laughs> I go to the great layout in the sky. We call it that, too. It's funny you just said that. Yeah. You know what else is going on at the show is um, Danny Yelsma is giving away free What's Neat This Week caps, mm -hmm. like we do every single year for the last two years at the RPM meet. And it's really neat when you look up the aisle and you see a sea of hats helping promote the mm -hmm. show that we like to use to promote the hobby. So thank you very much, Danny Yelsma, for doing that. Shall we launch into some of the logos that he wanted me to talk yeah. about tonight? Yeah. I remember one of the first ones he bragged about when he was in town, and we didn't show it on that show, was this new Canadian uh, national, is it Canadian uh, Pacific, the badge of honor with the beaver on it, this new golden logo that they are putting on the side of their uh, locomotives that are coming out right now. Absolutely a beautiful logo, and that's that one I'm talking about right there, popped up on the screen. Now, you helped me a minute ago, uh, Jeff, with this one. I didn't know what this was, 
And this locomotive looks like one of those high-speed locomotives, but you said it was called the... It's Brightline. Brightline. That's the one from uh, Miami to Fort Lauderdale in Florida. So that's a little rapid transit? It's a, it's a go, it drives on the... Uh, rides on the uh, Florida East Coast route, okay. but it is um, diesel-powered high-speed rail in the U.S. It that's was, awesome. It's, it's, I can it's see the next awesome. one I got is C and E I, the Chicago mm -hmm. Line. Are you guys familiar with that one? Sure. Chicago, Chicago and Eastern East Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. There you go. Being an Illinois boys is right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Mind you, these are stitched. They'd look good on shirts. They'd look good on jackets. Um, this is a slow time of the year for a lot of the people in the hobby where it's really important to, if you think about that club that needs to have those shirts made or actually next year's RPM meet when you need to guys have shirts made. Mm-hmm. Those are nice. Thank you. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> think of Denny when you want to yes. order your shirts for your business. I know that Steve Mantia did for his electric company. He had his electric shirts made mm -hmm. by Denny. Yes, he had. Very um, beautiful. There's another one that we've got, and there's three logos of this. Actually, I think it's four, and it's the city of New Orleans. The city of New Orleans in the uh, uh, orange and yellow. I've got one here in the green, white, and yellow. Mm -hmm. green another diamond. one in the black, the black diamond, the city of New Orleans. And then there's this one, the City of New Orleans, Illinois Central. I guess these would have been later logos with the orange in them, am I right? Mm -hmm. Denny has to love that. He has a beautiful passenger train that's in Illinois Central. I've seen him on Facebook playing with it. It's great. He loves playing making those videos. He gets a lot of views. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or that. Yeah. I've also got the Key West <laughs> extension of the Florida East Coast Railway. Wasn't that the railroad that was knocked out by the, one of those major hurricanes? hurricanes yeah. Yeah. Right? Absolutely gorgeous, this one with all the canoers and the bridge and the train on the bridge. I've also got another one here, um, and this is called Tri-Rail. Are you guys familiar with Tri-Rail? Not I'm I. Not. No. Okay, that's an F4... Uh, F40PH locomotive right there. X Amtrak, I guess. Very nice beautiful. Yeah. Yes, in the green, yellow, and blue. Next one we are familiar with is the Southern Pacific Lines. This uh, GP, it looks like a 9. Mm -hmm. GP9 locomotive with all those amazing lights. And the last one I've got is the Standard Railroad of the World, the Pennsylvania Railroad. Another great logo, which correlates really well with the Broadway Limited uh, engines that mostly they make in Pensy. Um, but yeah, Denny Yelsman, thank you very much. The high quality uh, shirts, I have one on right now. They're made by Port Authority. You can check out his website, multiple colors. This is not jacket season, but it's definitely shirt season. He makes golf towels. He makes all sorts of other things where it's stitched material with these gorgeous logos on it. Check it out at yelsma.com. Thank you very much, Denny. We wish you all the best. So, gentlemen, you brought some models tonight. What would you like to talk about as we're going to run a little would extra like to on tonight's show? Sure. Uh, I actually brought quite a few models of the V&O, the Virginia and Ohio, um, and that's uh, on purpose because actually our keynote speaker is from Model Craftsman Magazine, okay. and he's going to talk about Alan McClellan's V&O Railroad Nice. and that layout and what it was to scale modeling and, and how it changed how the prototype or people that uh, were actually not necessarily prototyping but did a credible job of making something so well in model form that it seemed real. Well, these models look like stuff I'd see at the RPM meet. And, and that is true. Um, mm -hmm. start, start describing some of these as Richard could maybe pan and shoot some of your beautiful loads. So we'll some, first, of the, yeah. some of the, um, the V&Os actually that I have there, they're all just um, Atherin cars with K4 decals. Um, K4 is one of those companies we haven't gotten to come to the RPM yet, but we're trying hard to get them there right. because they're doing some great decal work. Um, some of the other cars are, um, the car with, car with the gears on it is actually a resin kit uh, from Fernero and Cameron Lango. Okay. It will be at the RPM. Um, the car in front of that with the GE box is also a resin kit. Um, and the next car is actually, the one with the pipe load, is actually from the movie Emperor of the North. That's one that I stopped the movie and took a photo of with my cell phone several times during the movie and then was able to take just an Atherin 50 foot flat and kit bash it 
into the actual car. Wow. Um, Which one is that? That's the uh, one with the silver pipes hmm. on it. Wow, okay. And there's a little guy in there that's one of the hobos reaching for his hat because that's what he does in the movie. How about um, that? So, you know, you just, you just see things um, throughout your modeling life and see things on movies and things that you, you say, I want to replicate that, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's what's really great about um, learning at the RPM is you meet people that say, hey, you can use, you know, floral wire for this, or you can use, wrap the aluminum around the, a bolt yes. and make the pipes, things like that, that you wouldn't maybe think of on your own, but you get in a crowd of like-minded people and they can teach you. Right. Oh, that, that would be a great clinic to do, wouldn't it? The guy shows up at the big table in the front of the room with a big bag of trash. He dumps it out on top of the table <laughs> and says, let's see what we can build. We should have a contest yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Who, who, who would stuff the bags of trash? You could actually cheat. Oh, my gosh. No, that's actually not a bad idea. No, it's really yeah. Or give everybody the same bag of trash with the same stuff in it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see Ooh. who comes see up what, with the most inventive yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. Who can be the most right. creative? That's a good That's idea. Right. Yeah. Good, yeah, actually. Yeah. Write that down. Great video. Yeah. You can take credit yeah. for it. There you go. <laughs> No, that's awesome. Beautiful model. Steve Mantia, you brought a few boxcars tonight with you, too. Just grabbed a couple boxcars. It's getting close to Memorial Day. Glenda was uh, giving me some ideas of what to bring. So, as usual, just brought some of the old. Uh, there's an MTH and a Lionel. Um, uh, holiday, uh, Memorial Day type of cars in that. So, just something to bring. And you said on the back porch tonight that your train show last weekend that you hold down here and uh, is, is it, came up was really good. Yes, you did Arnold's, really well in that. Uh, Arnold Eagles, Down our, Arnold. Our, our new location. Uh, we had a bigger bigger area, um, still same amount of vendors in it, and uh, to keep the, the the group small in that. We had food. We had a layout. We had a good turnout. We were very pleased with what went on, and uh, we're looking forward to in December. Uh, we're going to have another show, and uh, go from there. And then nice. the rest of the year, we'll just continue to do. Everybody else's shows that come up will be in Greenville next year, next next month, uh, for the train show. And then uh, I understand there's going to be another train show in July in Dupo again. So um, and then make we'll the take rounds. a break or two, yeah. make the rounds mm -hmm. of uh, all the different shows that come up and try the to the bring our alive. stuff in that. So. Yeah. Things are doing well. It's alive. I know it's a summertime slowdown, but it's not so bad this summer, it seems like, of the folks I've talked to. Um, we wish everybody out there the best. Uh, NMRE National is coming up this summer, too. Mm -hmm. So look forward to that. Have we covered everything that you gentlemen would like to talk couple about? A couple more points to bring up. Please okay. do, okay. because I really want to hear more about okay. this show. But first, I have to tell you about my models. Okay. okay. So okay. the orange and white in the front are mine. I thought these were all Jeff's. No, no. these are the, <laughs> oh, He's a I'm steamer sorry. guy. That's okay. Okay. And uh, I model more of the uh, 70s, some into the 80s. So this is this train? Yes. Is that Inner Mountain right there? That's a, actually, it's an Overland Brass. Okay. And I can't remember if I and Dan Kohlberg painted that or Dan painted that alone, but I believe um, that's something we did. Okay. And the second one's a, a tangent model. Mm -hmm. I shaved off the top and put on round lids uh, to make it what GM and O had 50 of those. So I did that. The next was... Uh, um, Proto 2000 that got the razor saw and took a 50-foot gone to make it into about a 40-foot gone. Oh, nice. And then the last is a, another Overland model, their version of the Centralia Caboose mm -hmm. uh, that Dan and I painted. And I lettered it for some photo I saw, something unique from Iowa, one of the shots out there. So that's my little IC, ICG train. That's it's curious. most of those have been to the RPM. Now that model's been modeled a lot recently. Um, mm -hmm. I think Campbell Rice did it a he year and it. a half ago yeah. out of resin. No, mm -hmm. that was 3D printed, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And now um, David Leibach from mm -hmm. Tangent Scale mm -hmm. Models came out with that model. Mm -hmm. So now of you've seen you've seen all three and I, the brass yeah. one. Is there one that's more accurate in your opinion? Um, I think Campbell did a good job. Yes. And in fact, the fellow whose name escapes me now, Wright. Okay. Uh, right, right track. He made one years ago that took a high level of skill to put it together, far more than Campbell's did. Um, and the tangent is outstanding. I like the brass for that technology of 20, 25 years ago. I think it's still an outstanding model, but the tangent version is just incredible. It's just incredible. Agreed. 
Yeah. We usually don't put people on the spot and ask a question about a model like that, <laughs> like which do you think is, mm -hmm. but you handle that very, very uh, eloquently. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Diplomatically. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I like all those folks. You, know. you need to come around here more often, you know? You both have talents. Well, that I'm you. sure the viewers would enjoy hearing yeah. more about your layouts and more about other things you have going on. I mean, you guys ain't hey, no dumb. Happy to do that. Yes. We, will. we will. So, a couple points on the our, our event, mm -hmm. yes. our meet. Clinics. The theme this year is called Layout, A Day at the Theater. About five years ago, I don't remember what event I was at, but it had some of the famous modelers that have built fabulous layouts over the years, been in all of the publications and so forth. And I thought the day's going to come when those guys can't get around anymore. Mm -hmm. That they, like we lost Alan McClellan in the VNO, we've lost others. And so, I thought this year the theme better be something where I can get some of them to make it to Collinsville, present what they've done, how they operated, how they created things, the research, the scenery, the engineering, whatever they did to make it as world famous as it is. So some of those people are actually speaking, putting on clinics. Nice. Others, unfortunately, they can't make it. They're they're getting old. Yeah. They can't travel, or their spouses can't travel. Mm -hmm. So. That's the reason I picked that theme this year. And with that, as in all years where we have a theme, about half of the clinics, so say seven, eight, nine of the clinics, will be on that theme. And then the other 50, 60% will be on all the other stuff you see at all the RPM meets. Yes. So that's the theme piece of it. And then you wanna talk about layout tours? And yeah, we have two layout tours this year. Um, one of them is uh, the Loon Lake Navigation Company. Oh, what a beautiful is, layout that is. It is, it is awesome. It, um, oh, my God, I've got Pete photographs Smith. of that. Pete Smith, I did these photographs for, uh, I believe it was Kalmbach Publishing. Hmm. Um, Great Model Railroads, I think. The man's work is just, his bridges, mm -hmm. his attention to detail. And as I recall, I think that's S scale. Is that the PBL I, stuff? I think so. And it, his trees are just amazing. I, I, I walk in there and I'm, I'm just stunned. Oh, that layout everything awesome. I see. So, and then I think we're still negotiating on the second layout, but it will be on the Illinois side. We try to group our, our, our home layouts together um, so that there's no, not a lot of car time. We understand that people drive a long way to get to St. Louis, and the last thing they want to do is spend hours and hours in traffic around St. Louis, right? I know, right. Once they're already at the event. So we try to group those together, and we, we mix it around every year so that we don't show the same layouts every year. Um, like I said, we have a a lot of great layouts in the St. Louis area, as you know. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's it's um, a little difficult sometimes to I mean, the most um, famous, what, Gary pick. Hoover, Eric Bruman, yes. the names, right. that, the mainstay names that I grew up mm -hmm. with in the model press. And I wanted to meet these gentlemen and find out who they were. And I was so gracious to find they were kind. I mean, I knocked on uh, Eric mm -hmm. Bruman's house one day, chasing a foreclosure on a street called Floridon. And I think he happened to live on that same street because I looked him up in county records. And uh, when I knocked on his door and presented him with the Midwest Valley Modeler's tank car, he didn't chase me off the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> I was very impressed with the kindness that these modelers that we have around us are. They mm. really are. They really are. And, then, you know, like I say, we, we, we try to make it so that it's not the same layouts every year. Um, so... Dave Rader does a good job of yes. previewing those layouts and, mm -hmm. and doing all the hard work on that for us. Yeah, I learn about that when Dave tells me. He does a wonderful job of connecting with uh, who's, you know, who he's, he's talking to for that. Right. So. Well, website, do you guys have a website for folks to go to? Yeah. We do. It's uh, www.stlrpm.com. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, um, right now, actually, um, Eric loaded up the clinic um, schedule on that layout. So if you want to go to the, see who's going to do all the clinics this year uh, that Lonnie was talking about, they're all on there. Okay. Same thing with all the vendors and all the historical societies. Everybody that's registered so far is listed on the website under the different tabs. Nice. That's a good thing to check monthly. Um, go there to get your hotel reservations. From the, the you were talking tabs earlier, right. the tab on housing tells you about the Doubletree as being our host hotel and that you need to, any of these hotels that we've connected with, and I think we have contracts with maybe eight okay. in the Troy, O'Fallon, or Maryville exit and there at Collinsville. And so if you go to the website, know that you can call any of those numbers and you get a local person, 
unless it rolls over because they're busy, you get a local person at the front counter at that hotel by calling that phone number. And if you just remember to say RPM, whoever's on duty is supposed to know how to get to the block of rooms they have and the price of that. So there's usually a better price mm -hmm. and a guarantee of a room as long as you get it done. This particular year, we were horrified to learn months ago when we started negotiating with the hotels around Christmas, it's the Cardinal Cubs weekend. Okay. The last weekend in July. So all the Chicagoans come down because it doesn't cost much. Beer's cheaper here. And they <laughs> flood the area. So almost all the hotels already had most of their rooms booked when the calendar flipped to 23. We didn't know what to do. But we get so many rooms from so many of them every year. They were kind enough to honor that to the best of their ability. Nice. But please don't call me in June looking for a room because they're going to go okay. fast. So go to the website that you were talking about, go to the housing tab, hotels, and hurry. You know. That's awesome. How, how do you do better than that? It's very impressive. You very gentlemen impressive. ready to run some trains tonight? Yes. Absolutely. I'm going to give you the NCE. All right. Power cap. Thank you. It's got two radios in the basement that control it around 156 foot main line all the way around the basement. We've got two more of those, so there's one for you. I am going to take the smaller throttle tonight. There's another one for you over there. So we can actually see these cool models run on the layout, right? Very nice to see. Best hobby in the world with some of the best people in it. They're all sitting all around me right here. And I bet a lot of them use the NCU power system on their layouts. So with that, gentlemen, let's go run some trains. Good job. We got through it. We oh my God, it. it's going to be a great show. <laughs> oh my goodness. And oh. Denny's hats. We all get to make a thumbnail now and smile <laughs> at Richard at camera number one, which he's going to leave running for a minute and 45 seconds after the thumbnail. So we have credit roll. Ready? Okay. Ready to do your smile and smile? Here we go. RPM. <laughs> and we've got that. Good job, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, it was fun to be here. Keep camera one rolling. Kill camera two. Thank you all. Kill sound. Good job. Did you hear all of our boys took off to Colorado? Yeah. Yes, yeah. My whole, our half our podcast crew is. I was, yeah, I, I was on Facebook today. I was like, hey, there's Mike Buddy. I'm yeah. sure they're going to have a <laughs> yeah. lot yeah. of yeah. Joshua. Hey, yeah. there's. I was yeah. like, Ken's going to be and lonesome. James for Gears. <laughs> no, well, I got When you see those guys, guys say, college. by God, we did it without them. That's it. Yeah. I know, right? You gotta love those boys. Joshua oh, yeah. is so amazing. Oh, he's a sweet My, guy. See, like he doesn't trip lot. over he himself is. like I do. Get on around. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes. Yeah, you know. He does it with a big smile too. That's what's yeah. so great about it. He looks like a big teddy bear. <laughs> and he just he just starts talking. He's and just, just as nice. Just, but he's intelligent. He's oh, super yeah. smart. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. yeah, wow. We're so lucky the people we've met through this show. It's just, it's yeah, a gift a that keeps on giving. You really are.